Uh, we'd like to call the meeting of the Human Services Committee to order and uh, have a roll call, please. Bell? Here. Berryhill? Here. Famiano? Here. Swanson? Present. Logue? Here. Portentino? And we'd like to call authors to uh, <laughs> the chambers. We have a quorum. And um, since uh, we don't have any offers at the moment, I'll just turn the meeting over to Mr. Berryhill and present a resolution. Okay, Mr. Bell, we got the ACR 162. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Um, Assembly um, Resolution 162 designate the second week of October as Disability History Week. Uh, any education about history of civil rights is incomplete without the ongoing struggle of people with disabilities for equal opportunity and equal access. Historically, people with disabilities have been the subject of shame, fear, pity, and ridicule. They've been excluded from our schools, our places of employment, our neighborhoods, and our communities. They have been segregated in institutions and subject to widespread abuse and neglect. It wasn't until many years ago after racial segregation in school and housing became unlawful that people with disabilities were granted similar rights under federal and state anti-discrimination laws. California was ahead of most of the country in prohibiting disability-based discrimination in housing, employment, and in establishing a physical accessibility standards and the National Independent Living Movement had its start in California. On the other hand, however, historically, California also led the nation in involuntary sterilization of people with developmental and mental disabilities and didn't repeal this state law that had its origin in the eugenics movement of the late 19th and early 20th century until 1979. Far too many of the California's private businesses and public facilities are still inaccessible decades after the laws were enacted that establishes accessibility standards. This resolution is part of a national youth organization uh, initiative to create awareness of disability history and the disability rights movement. This marks the 20th anniversary of the Americans with Disability Act so it is an appropriate time to promote disability awareness by establishing an annual Disability History Week. And I ask for an I vote. We have witnesses. Great. And the witnesses? Hi. Um, good afternoon, Chair and Committee members. Thank you so much for having me today. My name's Allie Cannington, and I'm the Youth Advocate Intern at the Marin Center for Independent Living and a senior at Sir Francis Drake High School in San Anselmo. I'm here today to talk about the Disability History Week resolution. I just want to reiterate how important it is to me and so many other people across the state. My passion for disability awareness and history didn't begin until I attended the Youth Leadership Forum for S Students with Disabilities here in Sacramento last summer. Beforehand, living in Marin, I often felt alone because I didn't realize that so many other people had disabilities. And to be honest, I didn't feel like having a disability was something to be proud of. But coming to, re to YLF, I was so shocked and surprised and happy that there was this entire passionate community of people with disabilities. And I was even more surprised that there was an entire history, rich history and civil rights movement of the disability community and that I have so many of the rights I have today because of this movement. Leaving YLF, um, I developed this new sense of pride for having dis a disability and me and other youth decided to create the Disability History Week campaign. Coming back to Marin, um, I really wanted to share what I had learned and my passion with my community, so I decided to become the Youth Advocate Intern at the Marin Center for Independent Living. And I also um, decided to start leading the, the youth group they have, the Youth Empowered Leadership Group. And doing that, I was able to 
um, get a group of youth together, youth with and without disabilities, to advocate for the issues that were important to us, including the Disability History Week campaign. And my, all of our passion led to um, my school's first ever uh, Disability Awareness Week. And this Disability Awareness Week focused on um, disability history and disability awareness in general and accepting and having pride for um, having a disability. And although the majority of students were able-bodied, they were so impressed and so excited to learn about um, the disability history because just like me, they were so shocked to realize that it even existed. And creating um, this Disability Awareness Week I cannot tell you how it felt to have, the whole school felt unified and connected because everyone in some way felt that they had a connection to disability by learning about the history. And today, even still months later, I still seeing them wearing their wristbands they got and conversations in the hallways about what they had learned. I am truly honored to tell you about how this bill should be passed. And not only um, has it changed my life, but it has changed thousands of other lives at my school, my family, and my friends. And I have seen my friends who once did not know anything to be completely transformed and to become their own um, disability rights activists, even if they are non-disabled. And um, if it is passed, the work done at Drake High School will continue across the state. And just seeing it one school, um, every school deserves to have that experience. And um, it's important to have diversity celebrated and just more acceptance and less discrimination towards people with disabilities. And the most importantly, most importantly to have people with and without disabilities integrated and accepting one another. Thank you. Great, Great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, other witnesses? <laughs> Members of the community, my name is Sarah Misavian and I'm a student at Foothill College and work part-time for the Silicon Valley Independent Living Center. I'm here today to provide you with a brief testimony with hopes that you will support the Disability History Week Resolution ARC number 162. If such a resolution was to be pa would have been in effect when while I was at school, it definitely would have changed my life for the better. The most important thing this resolution has the ability to accomplish is decrease the experience for people of people's disabilities being teased. I have experienced being teased as a young child and it impacted in a variety of ways. As students, we deserve to be taught about different types of communities and cultures and become people with disabilities and because people with disabilities are the largest minority in our country and often, oftentimes the most disproportionately discriminated Against we, against, we should be taught our rights and history of our people. Youth with and without disabilities really need to know about our movement. Just like we learn about Martin Luther King Jr., we need to know about the people who have done so much for our community, people like Ed Roberts. Unfortunately, most people don't know who Ed is and all the great accomplishments he made for us. California has the ability to change history pass the Disability History Week resolution and encourage schools to teach us about our history, which is part of American history. Should this resolution be passed, the lives of thousands of youth in California will be changed. It will not only help prevent discrimination, but it will also reduce teasing and bullying, which currently impacts so many youth with disabilities in our, around our state. Therefore, I ask you to please support this resolution. Thank you. Great, thank you. Do we have other witnesses in support? Charlotte Newhart with Disability Rights of California in strong support. Joe Von A.G. representing United Domestic Workers asked me also in support. Fantastic, thank you. Others? Eli Gillardin with the Marin Center for Independent Living in strong support. Lisa Newmark of Integrated Community Services in Marin County supports the bill. I move the bill, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we've got a, mo a motion and a second. Uh, do we have any witnesses in opposition? Uh, if not, do we have any questions of the author? I do. Yes, Mr. Lowe. I just want to make a statement. You're an inspiration, and you, you touch our hearts. And um, 
it's people like you that make this a better country and a better state. So I want to congratulate you and you're the author of the bill for doing this. Um, it's an awareness, but you are champions. So I applaud you and I'm honored to have you in this room. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amiano. Yes, uh, just a comment. Uh, I want to echo uh, Mr. Logue's uh, comments and also for the young people in the room like Mr. Logue and Mr. Bell. Uh, f 50 years ago, um, I got involved on the East Coast <coughs> with uh, disability rights and the disability, the disabled community. You know, we've gone through a lot of name changes, if, if you can imagine. And uh, I'm just very proud uh, to uh, not only offer my co-authorship of this uh, but also to see the blossoming of this of this movement uh, along the way. It hasn't be been always uh, peaks, but there's been some valleys. And even amongst the most liberal of us, there are still uh, prejudices and mis misunderstandings. Um, you know, we, uh, many times we we want to value the worth of a person, but we we get uh, uh, buffaloed by the cosmetic and and sometimes even things like the uh, telethons actually further a perception that, and I did know uh, of uh, Ed Roberts, and I went to the um, opening of the uh, campus there, so it was very exciting to see that happen. I was on the Transportation Commission at the time that, that helped with the funding. So uh, I congratulate you, and uh, I know your road is uh, uh, a long one, So, uh, but it, it's nice to see uh, uh, people uh, of your age benefiting from what happened before, but also carrying the torch for what still needs to happen, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Romiano. Uh, Mr. Swanson. Well, thank you so much for your testimony. Uh, it was very inspiring. And I want to compliment the author uh, for your steadfast commitment uh, uh, to this issue. And uh, this is fundamental to, uh, to our current day campaign for civil rights. And so, uh, so thank you very much for the bill. Yes, just a final comment. I would like to thank Mr. Bell also. You have been so good and a real champion for uh, for er, for everybody that uh, has not you know maybe met the best parts of life and stuff and I, I want to or uh, on this bill I think it's a good one and, and I want to thank everybody that's come up uh, today uh, thank you and uh, you are heroes so uh, <laughs> there's no further questions the secretary can we, can we call the roll Bill. Bell, I. Barry Hill, I. Barry Hill, I. Amiano, I. Amiano, I. Swanson, Swanson, I. Swanson, I. Logue, Logue, I. Bertentino. Bill is out. That bill is out. Congratulations. I, just, I forgot we had a quorum. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's Miles here. Oh, I didn't miss that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berryhill, and we'll uh, proceed with uh, a resolution 151 by uh, Assemblywoman Ma, and welcome, and you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members. Before I begin, I'd like to offer authors amendments to address the California Association of Public Authorities concerns. Um, ACR 151, a resolution that recognizes and supports the maintenance and preservation of home care and personal services to seniors and people with disabilities Move the bill. through the in-home support services program. Um, with me here today is Jovan A.G. with the United Domestic Workers asked me to sponsor this resolution. Okay. I believe there's a motion and second to approve the bill as amended. Yes, sir. You have the well, I'll be brief with my comments since a motion was made. Jovan A.G. Uh, representing United Domestic Workers asked me, um, this resolution was introduced to do one thing, and that's really to change the discussion that I see beginning to happen around this program. Um, when I first took this job in 2003, the sentiment wasn't as I s am I starting to see it um, turn into. There's a lot of negativity around the program. I think the program has a lot of merits. I will be in agreement that there should be some programmatic changes that we should all talk about. Um, but I would like to see a common understanding that there is a value. This program needs to be preserved and maintained. Let's figure out the, the venue where we can have a thorough conversation <laughs> on this program and really look at ways to where we can make the connections that the federal government is looking for us to make in order to create standards to preserve the program and to keep it viable. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, other witnesses, please. Charlotte Newhart with the California Foundation for Independent Living Centers and Strong Support. 
Mr. Chair, members, Robert Harris on behalf of Service Employees International Union in support. We have other witnesses in support of this uh, resolution. If not, we have witnesses opposed. And I see none. Any questions from the members, Mr. Swanson? Yeah. I, well, first of all, let me thank the author for 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 the bill, uh, and also say that I agree. I think the discussion needs to needs to change, and <clears throat> and we all also ought to give credit where credit's due. The program uh, and the services that are provided uh, actually are economically sound uh, for the state, uh, and they provide uh, compassionate and affection and an effective service, and it ought to be acknowledged. Uh, and so I, um, uh, so I'm happy to see this uh, come forward, and I welcome uh, further discussion, uh, because uh, <clears throat> if we cost it out, we will find that support of this program saves the states uh, a lot of money, but provides service in such a compassionate way that makes it uh, very comfortable for for people uh, in their everyday living situation. Okay. okay other questions? Uh, if not, the author may close. And yeah, um, thank you so much. And I just want to uh, reiterate that in-home support service workers uh, do not have any retirement, health care, paid sick days, vacation days. And yet they're taking care of our most vulnerable, uh, the oldest, um, the seniors, the, the disabled. Yet when they're sick, they have to go to work. And that's one of my bills is uh, paid sick days to try to get uh, in-home support service workers especially um, days where if they're not feeling well, they can stay home and recover. So I just want to thank uh, members, and um, I hope that uh, we will be able to change the dialogue. I know that they are working very, very hard to keep people out of institutions, out of um, old age homes, and these days it's getting very expensive and people can't afford um, uh, to do that, and, and they do want to live in the dignity of their own home, uh, in the comforts of their own home, and these folks help them do that. So thank you, members. Thank you, uh, Assembly Member uh, Ma. And um, the motion on the floor, uh, if there's no further questions, is to pass the bill as amended with the author's amendments. They're non substantive technical amendments. And um, with that, uh, we'll have the Secretary call the roll, please. Bell? Aye. Bell? Aye. Berry Hill? No. Berry Hill? No. Amiano? Aye. Amiano? Aye. Swanson? Swanson? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Logue? No. Logue? No. Got three votes, three to two. We need one more. Three votes. One call. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator Leno is in the, in the House. Uh, Senator, you have SD uh, 654. Uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good to be back. You're welcome. So, as you probably know, about four years ago, the Department of Social Services reinterpreted the eligibility for independent living programs services for foster youth placed with non-related legal guardians and prior to that time all foster youth were eligible for independent living program services thank you it's a motion and second for your bill thank you Mr. Leno. so what the bill would do is reverse that decision so that all foster youth would be eligible and just to put a, a, a face on this uh, as many of you had as well, uh, shadowed this last week. And the young woman I met from San Francisco, 17 years old, who very dynamic and an accomplished student on her way to college. And I asked her how she made that transition from high school to higher education. <laughs> she said it just came in the past year or so when she got involved with ILP. Prior to that, she didn't know what courses she needed, needed to take. She didn't know what an SAT was, she had no clue or hope or imagination that she could ever pursue higher education. It was through ILP that she's now on the track for it. So it, it's life changing, of course, it provides for uh, job training opportunities, housing placement, as well as scholarships for college. So uh, I would ask your I vote. Thank you, Senator. Uh, other witnesses in support, please. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Kathy Senderling with the County Welfare Directors Association. We're co-sponsoring this legislation with the Children's Law Center of Los Angeles. I'll be brief since the motion has been made. Just to say, as demonstrated by Senator Leno's example, this is a highly successful program that can really set these youth on the right track to get into college, to get a job, and to really become successful adults, which all too often, unfortunately, does not happen for youth who are emancipating from care. This is a relatively small group of youth, and we do believe that there are some that are being held in foster care unnecessarily necessarily who could achieve permanency and exit foster care, exit the court system and live with loving non-related guardians for the, you know, until they turn 18, but for the fact that they cannot get these services. And so the guardians choose to not exit the program and still put up with the hassles of court every six months and working with the social workers and having attorneys involved when that's really not necessary. We think it's um, less expensive and far better for these youth to allow them to exit to permanency. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Other witnesses to support, please. Cindy Hillary, Regional Council of Ca uh, Rural Counties in support. Thank you. Thank Jean Hurst on behalf of the California State Association of Counties also in support. Casey Koneka of Souter & Associates on behalf of the Board of Supervisors of Ventura County and the City and County of San Francisco in support. Tia Orr on behalf of SEIU in support. Thank you. Uh, other witnesses to support, please. If not, other, other opponent. Anybody opposed to the legislation? And I see that, do we have any questions from our <laughs> committee? Uh, no questions. Uh, we'll have a close from the author. Sure, uh, though Senator. I know it's not your purview, we will make the case at appropriations that this will more than pay for itself if just 86 youth are mm -hmm. able to access the program and we take those families out of our court system and out of all of the processes that Kathy just described to you. So I ask for your vote. Okay, we have a motion uh, to uh, approve do pass the, the bill and can we have the secretary call the roll please? Bell. Aye. Bell. Aye. Barry Hill. Aye. Barry Hill. Aye. Amiano. Aye. Amiano. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Logue. Aye. Logue. Aye. Portentino. The bill is out. Bill's out. Thank you, Senator. It's a visiting. very friendly committee. I'll be back. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't, don't let us fool you. <laughs> All right. Okay, we have Mr. Fear in the house. Mr. Fear, uh, you have your AB 2322 uh, relative to CalWORKS, and uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Colleagues. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I <know. laughs> I've been stalking Mr. Leno for two days now. He should be so lucky. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thanks for allowing me to be here. Uh, it's actually on a, on a very serious matter. In the last couple of years, a number of kids, 31 kids, in LA County have died from abuse or neglect. Those deaths could have been prevented if information had been shared among the various social workers and others with responsibility for assuring the safety of those children. Uh, in many cases, employees of various departments who convene as teams were not allowed to share information or didn't know that they were allowed to share information. Uh, this bill is part of a larger effort on the part of LA County in particular to improve the ability of its employees to make the best decisions they can about where kids ought to be placed. It's an urgency measure. It ensures that social workers who use an index that LA County uses called the LA County Family Child Index uh, data point system have access to information about convictions relating to a crime against a child of people living in a home where the child is located. Um, and uh, it has uh, bipartisan uh, vintage here, and I hear the motion, so I'm gonna be very brief and, and just say this. This bill is, as I said a moment ago, part of a solution. It's not gonna solve the whole problem, but any time a committee or members of the legislature can take an action which could easily prevent some child from being abused or worse, it's a good day. And with that, I urge an I vote. Thank you. We have a motion, a second for the bill. And my understanding is the author has agreed to take the staff uh, recommended amendments as it approaches the appropriations committees. Oh, yes, and I, uh, forgive me, that should have been the first thing out of my mouth is yes, we've, we're taking the amendments, this is in the analysis, and we'll take them in appropriations. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. And that motion is for uh, due pass on the floor. Uh, to avoid any confusion. Do we have any speakers in support of the, of the bill? Yes, uh, so Senator Member Bell. This is uh, Garrison Smith. I'm representing the LA County Board of Supervisors, and I want to echo uh, Senator Member Fuhrer's uh, comments. This is a really important um, 
bill, the changes we're making really will help get information to social workers quicker than is presently the case. Uh, information like conviction um, for all those folks in the home. So when that social worker goes out to the home, they have it in their hand right at that point. Um, it's really crucial, and I just wanted to, to put our support out for this bill. It's really our attempt to move quicker down the road toward a place where social workers have all the tools that they, that they need to make determinations as they go out into the home investigating child, uh, you know, suspected child abuse and neglect. So again, I just wanted to uh, say that really quickly. I know the motion's on the floor, so I won't go on, but um, this will really change the way we do business and help us do it better. Thank you. Uh, other witnesses? Hi, my name is Tanya Taylor. I'm a supervising children's social worker in LA County. And I just wanted to take a moment, since I guess it's already out there, that um, I just wanted to ask Mr. Chair and the members to just take a moment and put yourself in our shoes as social workers and imagine entering a home prepared to conduct an investigation of child abuse or neglect with very limited information about the family circumstances, who lives in the home, if there ever been any convictions, is there a history of domestic violence, substance abuse, mental health issues, other interactions with other agencies, and then imagine having to make that decision in a matter of an hour or so and it, it, to put the kid in the best place that they need to, ble to be. And that decision could potentially destroy mm -hmm. the family who may have just needed some services to help them out or a decision that could potentially save the child's life. What do you choose? How do you choose? with not enough information. Does a lack of information mean that they stay in the home or does a lack of information mean we have to remove the child? Those questions are what we leave work wondering every day. And um, I'm glad that the bill is, is out there and it's gonna be approved so that we can feel more comfortable in that decision-making process, so thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, your service to our children. Mm -hmm. Thank you, next witness. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Kathy Sunderland with the County Welfare Directors Association. We're also a co-sponsor of the bill. Um, just to say that obviously improving the coordination and the communication amongst these groups and the agencies that, that serve families often without knowing that the other is serving is really vital to being able to respond appropriately to abuse and neglect. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have other supporters, please come forward? Welcome. Or on behalf of the Service Employees International Union, we had one of our members speak, but I wanted to state that we are co-sponsors of the bill and our unions across the state are in strong support of it. Okay, thank you. Uh, other support? Uh, can we have uh, opponents or other? Please come forward. Welcome. Thank you. <coughs> Good afternoon. Valerie Small Navarro with the American Civil Liberties Union, and I'm kind of in the other category. We're opposed unless amended, and I just... Uh, wanted to thank the author and his staff for all the work they've done. We want to continue working with them. We have some some issues we want to work through. I just want to briefly give the committee an idea of what what it is we're concerned about. There's a an issue of overbreath and vagueness. We we believe right now there's a term uh, that basically would could land a parent in the database, and it says if if. Uh, if the services are directed at preventing child abuse or neglect, and you can imagine that just about any parent might need some services to prevent um, child abuse or neglect. So that's a very broad term, and we'd like to see a definition inserted into the statute, as well as the other, the other term that's being used. And then the other issue is just on privacy generally, when the government creates da databases, we wanna see a set of protections inserted. So for example, notice to the individual and opportunity to correct information, um, destruction of the information, of the personal information when it's no longer useful, and then finally, uh, make sure that there's a legal remedy. So if somebody is, somebody's rights, privacy rights are mis mis mistreated or misused, um, that there is actually a remedy. So those are the issues we're working on and we'll continue to work with the author and his staff. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, other, uh, other or opposed? <laughs> uh, seeing none, we have a motion and a second to approve the bill. And we have questions of the uh, author by the committee. If not, uh, Mr. Kerr, you can close, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I uh, simply urge and I vote indicate that, as Ms. Small Navarro indicated, we'll continue to work uh, with their office to see if we can find common ground on the remaining concerns. The motion is to uh, pass the bill, and uh, uh, the understanding is the author has agreed to take uh, the staff recommendation amendments uh, uh, through the Appropriations Committee uh, hearings on this, on this bill. 
And um, we'll have the secretary call the roll, please. Bell. Aye. Bell, aye. Barry Hill. Aye. Barry Hill, aye. Amiano. Aye. Amiano, aye. Swanson. Swanson, aye. Logue. Logue, aye. Portentino. Aye. Portentino, aye. The bill is out. The bill is out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Colleagues. Um, <laughs> item number two, uh, Mr. Portentino, will lift the call, please. Portentino. Yes, sir. Aye. Portentino, aye. The bill, bill is out. You can adjourn. Uh, and can you add on to these? Yes, you can. I can adjourn. There's a rental bill. Mr. Chair's bill. No, we recommend to pass on both. And the other bill. Bill is along. Yes. Is it four votes? Okay. Um, we will adjourn the meeting. Um, Human Services Committee is now adjourned.